this shit? Mamma mia. I grew up playing Fantasy Star Online on the GameCube, eventually moving to the PC, and it's by far one of my favorite games of all time. I mean, not only was it the first console MMO to be released, but to this day it's still got a community of people playing and supporting the game through private servers. I don't think many 20 year old games have that support. Anyways, over its lifespan, PSO had a few different content packs that were divided up as their own episodes. The original Dreamcast release only featured Episode 1, the port to GameCube and Xbox added Episode 2, and the final PC release had its own name, Blue Burst. This expansion was also known as Episode 4. Well, that doesn't add up. In all my time playing Blue Burst, I don't remember anybody talking about Episode 3. And while there is a private server for it, the activity is pretty dull to say the least. It feels like people know that it exists, but just don't want to ever play it or talk about it. Hell, maybe they don't even know it exists. But it definitely does, and I still have my copy since I was a kid. It was exclusive to the GameCube, and it barely sold, like at all. Just taking Episodes 1 and 2's GameCube sales into account, something just isn't right here. Something else that's weird is that Episode 3 was released a year after Episodes 1 and 2, but Sega ended its online services years before everything else. What made this specific game so unappealing that it's just been completely forgotten? This is what's up with PSO Episode 3, Card Revolution. It's the early 2000s and you're a kid who loves playing PSO because you can be a robot and shoot cool guns. Your family takes a trip to the mall and you stop by EB Games to check out any new releases. And to your surprise, sitting there on the shelf is PSO Episode 3. And as kids would do, you bought it without looking too much at the case. So you start the game and at face value it looks... Pretty damn good! Tutorial? Nah, I know what I'm doing. I've played PSO before. And then the game just decides to hit you with a really good song. So far, this is looking to be a pretty good game. So you go to make a new character and it's time for some exposition. There's a weird sequence showing the central hub of the first two episodes and that it's 21 years in the future. And then you get a slideshow on what happened previously in the story, which is a little underwhelming. When you made a character in episodes one and two, you got this awesome video about the planet you're going to and the ship you're on, but I guess we don't have that luxury anymore. Oh well, time to create your character. You will chat and move in the lobby and morgue using this character. This will probably be your first sign that something's not right here. Yeah, so without further ado, the big change with PSO Episode 3 is that it is a card game. Bet you didn't expect that. Well hey, the game at least warned you. It did say welcome to the next level. No more running around and trying to shoot things. This time you gotta use your brain. So apparently Sonic Team thought that people were getting bored of the RPG format and they wanted to change it up. Did they think this is the change people wanted? And you know it's bad when the Fantasy Star Wiki outright bashes this change. Unlike its predecessors, Episode 3 abandons the hack and slash RPG gameplay for turn-based card combat. This wasn't exactly set up for success. But honestly, I really enjoyed this game. I would have wanted another RPG, but this game did enough things right that when I replayed it pretty recently, I had a lot of fun with it. So for the most part, the gameplay is pretty easy to understand. You start by choosing your main character, who has their own stats and abilities like movement speed and attack power. From there, you start building your deck, and you can choose from equipment, attack boosts, defense cards, and a few others. The more you play through the story, the more characters and cards you get, which means a hell of a lot more customization. It's actually really fun going through your whole list and seeing what combos you can put together. But I haven't talked about the big twist yet. There's a completely different playstyle you can choose from, which has all their own characters as well. And instead of summoning equipment, you actually summon monsters and fight alongside them. That's fucking cool. You're restricted by playstyle depending on what story you're going through, but both options seem really balanced and they're both very fun to play as. And I forgot to mention, there's two story modes in this game that you can choose from, but that'll have to wait for a second because I really gotta compliment the game's music. For a card game, it's got some pretty stellar tracks.
That is some good stuff. So you make your deck, and now it's time to put it to use. The actual gameplay isn't that complicated either. A dice roll decides who goes first, and you get an opening hand that you can choose to keep or swap. The actual turns go through four phases where you can equip items, move, attack, and throw out any unwanted cards at the end of the turn. But something that was always a little bit weird was that this monotone narrator would always announce what phase you were on. I mean, listen to this. Dice, set, move, action, defense, draw. And I thought I was bad. So to give you an idea of the kind of big-brained thinking you can use in this game, I'll walk you through a clip that shows a few more detailed mechanics that I haven't mentioned yet. Endu has a unique ability called Rampage, which means any attack he has, he damages all of the equipment that the enemy is currently holding. He also has a range of three spaces in front of him and can attack multiple enemies at once as long as they're within that range. You can see in this clip that both enemies are next to each other and I've also moved Endu up in front of them. I also have in my hand two action cards that boost my damage. However, one of them only affects a single tile while the other affects all three. This ends up not being an issue though because the red line on either side of the cards indicates that they can be linked to each other in any order. So I can stack both action cards and keep my initial range of three squares, meaning I'll be damaging all of the items that both enemies are equipping. So by the end of it, I ended up destroying almost all of their items and I brought them both down to half of their hit points. That might be one of the highest damage numbers achieved in a single attack. It was awesome. Now to talk about the story mode. The two sides you can choose from are Hunters, who work for the government, and Arcs, who believe the government has ulterior motives. The central theme among both stories is the use of card technology, and yes, this game has a canonical explanation why cards are used. So, apparently a new resource is discovered on the planet that can digitize objects and creatures, so the government then develops technology that can turn these digitized objects into cards, and they can be summoned on a whim. The resource in question is really only referred to as the germ, and one of the major plot points on both sides is how to find the source of it and how to control it. I should mention that you actually need to beat the game three times in order to see the true final boss, which is a little bit much to ask of the player. You gotta do one playthrough on each story path, and then you can choose for the last one which one you want to play through. I might end up just making a video about the plot of this game just so I can talk about spoilers, but I'll just say that the actual final boss gets pretty heavily referenced in, funny enough, the third episode of PSO2. On top of the central plot, each side has three main characters that have their own stories, and completing certain missions as certain characters grants you cutscenes where you learn more about the plot, which would be a really cool feature if you knew who to play as for each cutscene. You get little hints here and there by talking to your team, but sometimes it's just completely random. So I usually just refer to the guide, just to be safe. I won't spoil any story details, the only thing I'll say is that only one character's story actually relates to the previous two episodes, and that's Endu. Endu's pretty cool. The overall story is surprisingly good for what's basically a spin-off game, so I'll recommend it, but I might be a little biased. I mean, after all, I grew up with this game, and I feel like it should have gotten a lot more attention. It was a unique take on the card game genre, and was supported by an interesting story, great characters, and wonderful music. It's sad to see this game be ignored, because it has so much to offer. I think the main reason why I wanted to make this video is just to give this game the respect it finally deserves. PSO's story was never a big selling point, but when I replayed all the episodes, I became a lot more engaged in the world. Episode 3 took a different turn in terms of gameplay, but getting over that hurdle, there's an experience that other games just don't have. I guess the most I can say is, try out this game if it looks good to you. You might just be surprised.